Welcome back everyone. In this tutorial we are going to learn about error handling and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoyed the last tutorial. I don't know if you enjoyed. If you don't, just post below. Uh, I think it's, it's called commenting, right? Yeah, just comment below. And uh, I'll try to improve on it. Um, I'm actually trying to improve on it. Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to learn about array... Oh, sorry. Oh, well, array C. This is what happens if you are a geek. <laughs> In this tutorial, we are going to learn about uh, error handling and mostly how to catch exceptions and stuff like that. Well, errors can happen in certain situations, like the one I'm going to create now. Uh, when error happens, uh, it would crash your program. It might not uh, run the code as you expect it, or it might crash your stuff. I don't know. Yeah. So, well. You, you should code it in a way that an, uh, an error with uh, what you call never occur but it's not always the case because in some cases the error has to occur like uh, you you um, you know that it's gonna occur and you have to catch it somehow and in certain cases you, uh, this thing what you call a user might uh, what you call cause an error like he might mistype something or he might I don't know do something else or or he, he might try to um, like mess around with it and something like that. So it is essential to catch errors and it is more essential to work out the error and then explain the user in a way that he can he can understand. Because if an error occurs, like an array index out of bounds exception, as you saw in the last tutorial, uh, it come it came in red here. If an if an error occurs, then all the user is gonna see is array index out of bounds and blah 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 and the entire stack trace and stuff like that. And he's gonna be oh my god, what is this going on? So it's more essential to explain the user like uh, don't worry, don't panic. It's just an array. No, not that as well. It's a bit too geeky. But it's hard to think about as a normal person now. Well, what you can do is you can say to the user that. Mm, Oh, be sorry, but the item does not exist, or the the um, item is, or or you can say that there's no room for it in the array, not in the array, in the list, something like that, which is more explainable to common man. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. So, uh, well, I'm just gonna create a situation in which we are expecting an integer, but the user is gonna type. I mean, I'm gonna type a text like something. So string input equals j option we need an import here so import j java x j option pane and input equals j option pane dot show input dialog i'm too lazy to type so i'm just going to press enter it's going to say uh how no type a uh, number please I have a number, please. Okay. Now I'm gonna do int equal i uh, m equals uh, input. Sorry. So I'm basically converting the input into a number because I'm expecting a number. So, so if like what you call the user types nine, the int n is uh, the, the the value of int n is gonna be nine, and so on. So, uh, okay, so let's do it in a way. Let's do j option pain dot show dialog uh, saying that how uh, okay, uh, let's do it this way. Show Mrs. dialog uh, and okay, value is n. Okay. So we're just playing the input to the user, and we have to add something component now. Okay, so what we're doing here, we are taking an input as a string. I mean, you get a string actually. You don't take it as a string. You you um, get it as, as a string by default, and then we are converting the string into an integer because we're expecting an integer, and then we are going to show the integer to the user as value as plus n. Okay, let's run this and let's see. Three, and when press OK, value is three. Yeah, okay. Now if I press Shift F six, and I'm going to type 
Uh, crap. Oh shit, look at this. Exception in thread main, blah blah blah. Now for common users, this is a panic attack. Well, <laughs> uh, well, well, it depends on how strong his art is, actually. Well, it's a panic attack here. It just says, and all the color is is like red color, and you can see blood, uh, what you call dripping somewhere, um, I don't know. And Java result one, and and the user might be, oh my god, what is Java result one? Does that mean my computer is dead or something like that? I don't know. So what we are gonna do here is we're gonna handle this error. Well, we're gonna handle it, and how do you handle it? You do try and catch. So you try this code block, then you catch the error if it if it occurs, and then you do something else. So try and catch appears in a three segments. Try that the code that you wanna try, then catch that is to be executed if an error occurs in the try block and then finally this is an optional block which would contain code to do after the error has been caught and and finally gets executed every time so even if the error occurs or if it doesn't uh, finally gets executed so I don't really see a point in having finally but uh, well I don't know why they introduced it so you see try and you put the code inside I'm just gonna indent it a bit, and then catch, and you're gonna catch an exception here. So exception, and you say exception ex. I don't know. I I, I always call it ex. And uh, here you put in code that you want to show to the user rather than this panic attack. So you say j option pane. Uh. Uh. Please stay calm. I don't know. Live pool. Stay calm. An error has occurred. As there, an error. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Live pool. Stay calm. There's an error. Okay. So actually, that's a good message. Uh, so you try you are trying this here and if an error happens here this comes up saying the message and then you have uh, finally which is uh, okay I'm just, I'm just gonna put something here Woohoo. out of danger okay let's run this code so let me just run through this again. In the try, everything between these two brackets is the try block, which is going to be tried. And if an error happens somewhere here, the compiler is going to jump onto the catch block. So if an error happens in this line, it's not going to execute this line and it's going to jump here. So I hope you understand because if an error happens here, <coughs> It's gonna. It's not gonna execute this line. It's not gonna execute this line. It's it's, it's gonna jump straight into this line. Catch line. An exception means general for all, for all ex exceptions. And finally, it gets executed even if error happens or if the uh, the error um, doesn't happen. Let's run this code. Press Shift F6. Type a number, please. Eight. Values eight. Who who out of danger? Yeah, it's because uh, there was no error. Shift F6, uh, type a number, crap, live cool, stay calm, there's an error, and woohoo, out of danger. So, as you see here, it went f here, to here, and here, but then an error happened. So basically, that's the error flow. That's the flow, it works, I mean, that's, that's how it works. And another thing is that sometimes you might want to display specific um, what you call messages when specific error happens so like for in this case in this case there was a uh, number format exception which is not because exception is exception covers all exceptions like it can be uh, what you call number format exception it can be a range is out of bounds exception it can be um, out of memory exception or I don't know IO exception something like that so it, it, if any of them are here then exception gets executed it's it's a good practice to have exception however it is a more a better practice to have uh, specific catch blocks 
So for a number of format exception, you want to have one catch block. So you can have, uh, what you call, multiple catch blocks here. So I can say number format exception. Oh man. Number format exception ex. So if number format exception happens, this line of code is going to get executed. However, if catch array index out of bound exception uh, ex. Okay. So as you see here, if number former exception happens, this would get executed. However, if this happens, there is an array error. See? So, uh, well, if array index out of bounds exception happens, then this line of code is not going to be executed. This line of code is going to be executed. And if a uh, number form an exception happens, this line code is not going to be executed, and this line is going to be executed only. So let's throw another exception here. Let's do, let's make an array, just to make an exception. Array string uh, s uh, array new string two. So this array contains two elements. Well, I'm gonna try to access the uh, third element. So third one. Okay. So I'm gonna try. Uh, two is okay. I think yeah. Two. Case is um, zero base. Two is the uh, third element and not the second element. Okay. So an exception would happen here if this goes right. So let's uh, run it. So I'm gonna, so to get the array index out of bounds exception, I'm gonna type six um, deliberately. So I'm gonna value six. That means it has reached to this line. I'm gonna say okay, and like, uh, sorry, live call, say call. There's an array error. This line get got executed. Okay, woohoo, out of danger. Well, that always gets executed. Let's do it again, and okay. Type a number, please. Crap. Okay. Instead of typing, I'm just gonna press cancel. Live call stay calm. There's an error that got executed. However, now this is gonna get executed as well. So I should be expecting array and out of bounds exception as well. So I'm just gonna press OK. Whoa. This is. Oh oh oh. As I. How can I forget this? I told you before that if an error if an error happens here, it's not gonna run this line of code because it's going to jump from here to here and it's going to go out to finally so as you see it's, it's good oh, well actually I like this so that's how you handle errors in Java if you wanna have uh, if you if you're too lazy to type I mean I'm too lazy while I'm working I mean while I'm developing code I'm too lazy to type all this I, I just catch a general exception called exception however later in the course I would change the exception to the specific exception so I so I can display specific error message to the users. Uh, for instance, if the if the if in the text box, if age is expected and if user is typing some name, then there should be an error called that. Please type a name. And if in some cases, if user is trying to add some value to an array, and an array index out of bounds exception happens, then I want to display a message like the item does not exist in the array or something like that uh, well having different catch blocks have, would help users to uh, would help user to know what sort of error is happening and that would guide him to fix that error if if it is uh, his error then in certain cases you have um, database exceptions SQL exceptions and stuff like that because the um, database cannot be accessed or probably it's been open in, in another program or something like that so for that it is it is a lot more uh, better if to have different exception blocks here but while they're developing the code well I don't really care about exceptions because I probably can trace them out like there's an error there's an error, blah, 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 stuff like that and yeah so in my next tutorial we are gonna learn about uh, hash maps probably I don't I don't I don't know actually so we are probably going to learn about hash maps or I don't know something else or something else probably oh in the next tutorial we're going to learn about file handling I think 
or hash maps probably. Yeah, whichever. You'll see. So, till then, bye-bye, see ya, have a good one, and enjoy catching the exceptions.